Good morning, y'all. So I wanted to um come on here and kind of tell y'all what I was thinking, what my thinking process was when I thought of that question yesterday is because I was thinking along the lines of um, generational curses. So I was thinking, I'm like, well, when the narcissist is not getting the karma that they're supposed to be getting, is it affecting their children? And like, if they pass on or whatever, does their karma, you know, just like generational curses, it, it jumps to your kids and the next kin or whatever, you know, say so it just keeps going on and on and on. So from, I thank you guys for, you know, putting your input in there and giving me some of your point of views on, on the subject or whatever. Um, somebody did say that <clears throat> the kids tend to, pick up this the narcissistic traits like some of them get the trauma bond the trauma and then they turn out to be narcissists as well you know what i'm saying which is so sad because people just need to sit down and heal even though i know it ain't that easy for a narcissist because they got first believe that ain't nothing wrong with them and that they're the problem they got to take accountability for all of that stuff to take place or whatnot but i just feel so bad for the kids and then too it took me to the kids who have narcissistic parents you know what i'm saying you grew up with those parents and i just cannot imagine y'all the fake love that these people were giving their children when they were coming up you know what i'm saying like the silent treatment the mind games that they play with us, you know, so as a little kid, I cannot even imagine myself going through that because it, it almost took me out as an adult. So for the kids to go through this and they have to be raised up by this and go through this all their life, baby, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not making it my, my problem or my issue or whatever, but just to think about how you grew up and now you're an adult and you seen that your parent was a narcissist and I don't know. It, it just will hurt me to not know that my parents don't love me like they supposed to, you know what I'm saying? I just, I don't know. This can be an ongoing thing or whatever. I just cannot, I can't even put myself in y'all shoes that had to deal with a parent or parents who were like that. And then the things that they put on you, now you got to carry those things around. And it wasn't even your own. It's something that you grew up seeing because as kids, we mock what we see in our household. So for me, my mama was a hustler. My mama worked for everything that we had and she worked her butt to the bone. To the day she died, she worked her butt off. So that's me. I'm just trying to do things a little bit different. I'm not trying to keep working to just keep paying bills. I'm trying to, you know, pay bills and do a little extra. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know no other way to go and get it, but to hustle for the things that I want. My mom did not have a lot of conversations with me. Like when it came to the adult talk, the birds and the bees and stuff like that she wasn't the one for me to go to for that. So I learned all that stuff through the streets and through things that I seen growing up, you know what I'm saying? So, um, my mom was strict for me, you know what I'm saying? She was, she was strict to all of us. Well, the three oldest, me, my oldest sister and my oldest brother she was strict to us but in their eyes she was a little bit stricter to them than she was with me but to me i felt like she was strict strict on me you know what i'm saying after talking to them and seeing where they came from when i was just a little one and and you know i was just a baby and i wasn't really getting the punishments and things like that you know what i'm saying but either way my mom was a yeller she yelled, she spanked, and that's how I grew up gonna raise my kids, you know what I'm saying? But because I seen what my mom did and I seen the things that I didn't like about my mom, I changed those things when it came to me and my son, you know what I'm saying? So 
it's working for me. It's not going against me. It's actually working for me. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't going to say that the, the chastisement that my mama gave me did not work because she did. I, it helped me come to be a beautiful, mature person. I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm respectful. I'm mature. I handle business. I'm human. I make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? But she did her big one in raising us. She just instilled... The things that she learned as a child growing up, she instilled those things in her kids also. You know what I'm saying? But, man, I just can't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? And so I just, I was thinking about the kids that have to come up behind this narc. And I was specifically thinking about my narc because he does have a daughter and I did mention to him before, I'm like, listen, you better be careful how you're treating people because you do have a little girl. And, and what you going to do when she run across a man like you? First thing he want to say is I'm going to power him out of here. But ain't nobody powering you out. So what if my dad thought the same thing that you thinking? Would he be right for powering you out of here too? You know what I'm saying? He's just like, no, that's different. No, ain't no different. If you can sit here and say that you wouldn't accept this for your daughter, why do it to me? But like all narcissists, I ain't doing that to you. You doing this to yourself because you always doing X, Y, and Z instead of him taking his accountability for why I'm even saying what I'm saying to him. You know what I'm saying? But that's how they roll. And so I just was thinking about that. And I'm like, man, if his daughter got to pay for his karma or his son his sons uh, because he got six kids if his kids got to pay for his karma baby they in for a ride because alone too when i was thinking that i'm like this man could have been got his karma not that the karma is important but i'm just saying you can't sit here and tell me that after all of the hell that the narcissist done put you through that you don't want them to get what's coming to them. You you can't sit here and tell me that they ain't what you want. Because I know I do. I wish him. I pray mercy on him. For the things that went down in this relationship. Because I'm taking my accountability. One way or the other y'all going to take accountability. For the foolishness that y'all done put out here on people. Narcissists that is. You going to take accountability one way or the other. It's either going to hit you. It's going to hit your kids. It's going to hit whatever. But it's going to come a time where you're going to have to sit down and eat everything that you done done. And I was just sitting here thinking that day. And I was like, you know what? All those times that I took him back. He was in the middle of getting some of his karma. Because he always called me when he was in a rut. And what I do, I come pull him out of that rut every single time. He was supposed to be in that rut. But because I'm not supposed to get any of his karma, even though I got some of it, I wasn't supposed to get his karma. I'm supposed to let him be so he can deal with his own stuff, get himself together. And if he get himself together, then maybe I'm talking about past tense. Then maybe he can come back into my life after he done took accountability and, and went through all the things that he needed to go through. But now, baby, you don't wait it too late. The, the time is up. The, the clock done ran out. So there is no more if you get yourself together. Now, this is X'd out. This gone. We we not going to relive this. I'm just here telling my story about the, the situation. But I'm thinking now that I kept getting in the way of him receiving his karma. And little things was happening to me. But I didn't see it that way then. You know what I'm saying? Because I was so in love that. You know, if he got into a rut or whatever, gaslighted me, hoovered me, you know what I'm saying? He didn't come to me with the issue. He just came home. You know what I'm saying? He just hoovered me back in, gaslighted me, and it didn't ever take much. So, next thing I know, we're back in this situation. So, then once he comes and get his stuff back together, pull his stuff together, once he come over here with me, then he just chunk up the deuces and leave me. Without a, without an explanation, without even a reason. He'll just haul off and leave me. 
So now I got to sit and, and feel some type of way because, oh, you just came over here to get yourself together. And now that you got yourself together, you finna bounce. So that's what he was doing with me. That's what I'm seeing it as now. He would come over here, rejuvenate himself, get his money back up, do what he needs to do. He could get on the ball now because who he was with prior to me, after leaving me and coming back, they done ran him through the mud. So now you got to come back over here and get all of his stuff back together. So that way he can run to the next person, do the same thing all over again. So he think, because this is where the, the door stops at now. <laughs> so now he go over there, get ran down. Then, then he finna turn around and come back to me. And I'm going to be here with open arms. Like, come on, baby. Just come on. Come on, mama got you. I got you, baby. Lay all your worries on me. Ah. Don't finish your statement because we not doing that this time. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> like I said, that is out of here. Don't get me speaking Chinese or whatever language I was speaking trying to copy off of a Drew Hill them. I'm trying to finito. Yeah. Don't don't make me go speaking that language again because you know I mess up some words, but that's what I mean. Anything you can think of that mean no, not today. It ain't happening. Find somebody else to play with. I ain't the one. That word. That's that's what I'm talking about right there. All of them, everything you can think of. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's just, it's a crazy cycle. And so, looking at the way that he treat his kids, he do his kids the same way he do me. He in their life one minute, next minute he not. He mad at them. And I mean, he, he talking to the kids like they the parent or something. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just crazy. But the ones who had parents like that, I, my heart tore up for y'all. But I love y'all, especially the ones who healed past it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you can help somebody else one day. Hopefully y'all out here helping other people who going through these things. Because I just can't even imagine y'all. My mama to sit here and be like, because I only had my mama in my life. My daddy was in and out. That's why it was so easy for me to accept the not running in and out of my life. My daddy will be here, then the next minute he gone. My daddy will live with us, then the next minute he gone. Just up one day and he be gone. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I made myself comfortable with seeing that. And that was the only man I seen my mama with. So, that was the only example that I had in the household of a man being present. Mama didn't deal with other men. She solely, if I seen her with a man, it was with my daddy. And so, he would be here, gone the next minute. He would be gone for years. Pop back up like ain't nothing happened. Pick up where we left off at. You know what I'm saying? So, I was used to that. I, that's where I get it from. You know what I'm saying? From when I was younger. Seeing my daddy bounce in and out of my life. And it was okay. Because every time I seen him, there was a fresh new love for him. It, I wasn't mad that he wasn't there any of that and so now i see that in this relationships that i had with this art that i never was i was mad that he was gone but him coming back home was everything which is crazy but that's how it really was and if you dealt with a narcissist you know exactly what i'm talking about you know it's crazy that they left in the first place and you know it's even crazier that they want to come back but when they come back you give them a little fight, but you still open your arms. <clears throat> Sorry. Come on, throw. You still open your arms and you let them right on back in and we continue to love on them. And so that's that's where my mind and my thought process was when I thought of that question. And I thank y'all so much for interacting with me and giving me your input because you did put a a better light on you shine the light or bright up <laughs> come on tom where you at you shined some light put it like that you shine some light on the situation for me for me to better understand when you're a child dealing with a narcissistic person or whatever how it can affect you and that yeah sometimes you do get that karma and sometimes you turn into the narc yourself and then you got your own karma gone going on so it's just it's crazy. I just can't even imagine. 
but i love you guys i thank you all for everything that you do please like comment and share grow something grow something grow something whatever it is grow something in your yard or in some pots i'm telling you you can do it i wasn't gonna grow anything because i wanted to get me a house first but the way the world set up these days baby i'm gonna go ahead and do that now because i ain't got time to wait waiting gonna be too late so i'm gonna get ready so i ain't gotta stay i'm gonna stay ready so i ain't gotta get ready but fall in love with yourself that's the most important thing that you can do in your healing journey or just in whatever situation you're in or whatever fall in love with yourself more and more every day whether it's a little bit at a time one day at a time one step at a time it does not matter just as long as you fall in love with you okay because i love you and i want you to have a great thursday it's gonna be friday y'all weekend time here we come so have a great day and stay tuned i got you later on Mwah.